Esri is about serving our users, and you know that. You can feel it often. Uh, we make mistakes. I apologize for those. But I want you to understand something. We fully intend to make your work successful. And we also like the idea that we can advance our science. This, this gets us excited. We continue our values of strong engineering and science and promoting spatial literacy and being a good place to work. That's kind of the way we see it and prioritize for fashion. And we also love this idea that we can make a difference with our work, as you do. Uh, we don't just work on software. There are many teams that, in Redlands that work on professional development tools, like for lifelong learning, for, for example, e-training, web classes, student licenses that we just released last week, professional personal use licenses, press, events, now over 200 books that we published, largely around making your work better. One of them that I think we gave each of you a copy of at this conference is the new ArcGIS, the Ar new ArcGIS book. You guys got it? I guess I'm asking. Yeah, it's... It, along with the ArcGIS imagery book and new books that are coming, are integrated with e-learning. So we call it Learn ArcGIS online and book. So it's a combination of web and others. While ESRI does its work, we are very much appreciative of an ecosystem of partners, several thousand of them that are equally committed to making you successful. Some of them huge IT organizations and hundreds of them that are focused services or extending, extending technologies uh, partnerships. And they, like us, are, are very committed to making you successful. ESRI supports a series of special relationships as well. Many of these are in the NGO community. Our partners like the Audubon Society or the Nature Conservancy or the WHO or the Catholic Relief Services organizations carry on really mission work, which is very powerful. And we provide them software and support. And they enrich our community as a total, frankly. This year, we are... This year, we're announcing a new program with our partner at GIS Core. It's called the GIS Volunteer Community. And we are providing with them software and other types of support to focus on this, this adventure of providing, mm, providing resources where they're really needed. And uh, the participants there who uh, have, I mean, the, the evidence that this is so powerful is this beautiful little map that I shared with you before about the Belgian Congo. Hundreds of you just started making this map, and bang, two weeks later. But it isn't just something in Africa, responding to disasters here in North America and in Europe and in Asia. Real work, volunteer work, helping people do things. This is, I'm so proud of this uh, organization even being affiliated with it. I'd like to have all the GIS Core people stand up, but they tell me I'm out of time, so I'm not going to do it. Anyway, be acknowledged. Thank you. In the work of... <laughs> I think that's the SCGIS Core over there. Uh, they are they're another volunteer organization that works all over the world, and they're from all over the world, doing the mission of conservation help in various NGO communities. And this year, I'm very pleased that Sylvia Earle, who has spoke, spoken to you before, has launched her new Mission, mission Blue program to build a GIS for the entire ocean. And whew, it's cool. In the area of education, higher ed, as well as the new school program that covers the entire planet, involves us providing our software and online support free. And thank you to all of the hundreds of geomentors in this audience that have volunteered their time to help a teacher uh, and carry out really great work creating and building the next generation of kids. And you're going to see some very special ones this afternoon, I assure you. 
I'm going to close by a couple of final words. We've been working, you and I, together for a long time. <laughs> Dozens of years. OK, almost 50. <laughs> I'm not that old, really. <laughs> I just look like it. Our field, the science of wear, is now being recognized as a powerful force. And it's worth noting for solving problems, of course, for understanding our world, and also for, I would say, applying science to virtually everything. WebGIS is taking GIS to a whole new start scale. I mean, that's what I've been, you got the message, right? I have been sharing it again and again. We're about to launch into a different scale of things. And that's going to help you do your work better. This isn't sort of la la land. It's going to help you effectively do a better job. And it's going to transform how we share and collaborate information. And those two words are so very important. So as GIS professionals, I would simply say we're, we have some new opportunities to contribute to our organizations and also make a difference in the world. Now, what does that mean? What should we do next? You say, Jack, that's neat technology. It's just technology. So I think we have to use our imaginations. That's, I think, what what I think about. We have to envision what's possible in our organizations and beyond, learn the new tools, adopt the new patterns, explore new applications. This is not new to you. You've been doing it for decades. Share and collaborate. Encourage new applications and users and uh, commit to sharing your work. Communicate about it so that we can all collectively learn what this is about. Well, Leonardo said, here's my notes, he said something very powerful. He said, <laughs> he captured what the spirit is of what I've been sharing, which is knowing clearly is not enough. We must apply what we know. Being willing is not enough. We must do. So ladies and gentlemen, my challenge to you is, let's take this, scale it up. Let's take our work collectively to scale. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much.